And here we are, it's day number five. We are discussing our favorite games of 2022. This is our favorite game of this calendar year. My name is Shelby Stokes. I am Casey Cool. I'm Eric Scott. I am Philip Karen. Yeah! You did it. Uh, and you did it. This oh, is the did it. I did, I, did, I, did, I did that for you, Casey, all right? I did it for you. <laughs> I appreciate we, it. Uh, normally, I introduce them. I'm not introducing them. It's, 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 it's a thing. Anyway, so happy. You guys, I have to say that coming into day five, and I know we're recording these all in one day, spoiler alert, um, breaking know. the facade, but... Close. I really enjoy this team. You know, yeah. I know there's been ups and downs and uh, not 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 too many downs, but, you know, we all love video games and it's just been a really yeah. fun to discuss all mm-hmm. of the games tonight and it doesn't stop there. So, so to start this episode today, everybody, we're doing a little segue. We're doing our best moments of the year before we do our games of the year. Our favorite moments of the year. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Top moments of the year. What was top. your top gaming moment of the year, Shelby? Okay. Um, it comes from a stream with Philip Higher Ground oh. and I when we were playing Fortnite late into the night one night. And it's probably, you know, re- we, we got some feng shui. We're feeling good. You know, it's the middle of the night. We're rocking and rolling. And then we, we come up on a vault and the vault has the door open. So I zip up and I look into the vault and there's all this gear in here. And I'm like, boys, we've hit it. For some reason, they left all this gear behind. Get in here and get this gear. There's shields, there's guns, there's the whole deal. So we all go in and we start looting. And then all of a sudden, all three of the teammates drop into the front of the vault and just gun us down mercilessly. (laughs) And we totally got pwned by a group of 13-year-olds and it worked flawlessly. And just looking back on that, we were laughing. We thought we were kings and all of a sudden we were zeros. And it was one of those moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, this is this is too perfect. Yeah. That's a good one. (laughs) Phil, is it the same for you? (laughs) What's your gaming moment? No, you know, mine's gonna be more uh general and we'll I'll get we'll do my two minutes of sappiness and then we will uh get on. You know, my gaming moment has been a more generalized gaming moment for the year for me and it has been uh building this with you guys um for me you know i know that a lot of the struggle that i struggle with has been like how do i integrate gaming into my life i know that uh casey you and uh, shelby you have kids too and you know what that life is like from seven in the morning until 10 o'clock at night you're going and there's no uh set schedule and i know eric you're insanely busy i know you were up super early this morning too And just like, there's no flexibility in schedule anymore. I can't put eight to 10 hours a day into gaming anymore or four hours. I'm lucky if I get one hour and that normally is at the cost of sleep. So I have been really um, looking for a way that's more meaningful for me, especially as my son grows older, Mm -hmm. thinking about legacy, um, how I could integrate gaming, still enjoy gaming, but also do something impactful to the community, do something where we can get back, we can create entertainment and building this with you guys has been really great. Um, Bringing Eric, you and the things that you're doing and the Pokemon show and just seeing how you flush it out every single week. um, uh, Just working together with you guys has been just looking at our development as individuals, um, just between the three of you, looking at those original shorts that I posted where it was like, just a clip, just like a 30 second clip of us talking without even our brand to figuring out how to remove the background to Casey, you landing all these interviews this year. And just like looking back on some of those moments and seeing all those different people from something classic to Parker, which I will say that I swear to you, I am going to get on an episode with Parker because he seems like my kind of guy. And he seems like somebody that like we could talk (laughs) a little bit of crap and we would have some fun. Um, and I've been watching his streams lately that he does on Twitch. So like, I'm going to hound him until he comes back again. And uh, we'll, I will get on an episode. But just like looking yeah. at this development and like learning how to do these things, the video editing, the learning how to remove the background, the improving of the shorts. Casey, all of your Marvel shorts that have just taken off. Eric, like I said, all of your Pokemon pack openings and all the, the work Twitch that you stream. put into it has just been the Twitch streams, the finishing of Chrono Trigger, the finishing of Resident Evil, the finishing of the playing of the description, the, the streams that we did without audio, just like an entire stream because we had no one watching us. And I know that Eric and Shelby, you can relate to that. And Casey, you can relate to that too when you were doing your Nuzlocke run and just like no no audio or just like it's glitchy and no one's telling you what's going on. And you're yeah. just like you play an hour and then you go 
dude, I just spent an hour doing this and I can't use any of this content for clips because the audio was screwed up. And I've had at least a dozen streams yeah. in the past six months where nobody, nobody's told me that the audio is working and just, but looking at how far we've come and then looking at here we are now at the end of the year and we have a really good sense of direction and like we're hitting it every day. Um, it's just been great. And it's add a lot of value to me in secret. It's helped me justify why I bought the PS five. Um, I am like, well, I could stream off of it. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's been great. And I've been, I've had so much fun and I look forward to doing this again next year and like hitting some big numbers and doing some big, cool things. I will say that my question for you, Shelby, as we move, um, into someone else is like, when are you going to freaking build that Lego thing that you bought? When yeah. are you going to build the Spider-Man? That'll be my gaming moment. When are you going to build the Spider-Man? When is the, the Twitch, right when is the Twitch, 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 Twitch stream? It's Charity right stream. there. Did Charity you already stream. build it? That would actually... No, I have an idea. no but that's that's the box right there. No. So, so, I mean, full disclosure, I've had when it just like When are you going like, to take the camera? <laughs> Charity stream. We have a seat. We do that for 24 hours. We have that in the side. We have the game. Get a, get a folding table. Idea. Get the Legos uh -huh. out. Let's see the Everyone mini takes, figurines. Like, rest. I mean, yeah. I've been here. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Why? So even problem, guys, Why? Is I overcommit and then I and then I procrastinate. Mm. And here's the Christmas build. <laughs> Why? Um, and it's still in the box. So I've here's had to Christmas do the other Christmas Legos before I could get into this Christmas <laughs> Lego. And uh, first world problems, guys. Um, so this will be my next build. True. Yeah. Hashtag blessed. My next Christmas. The Christmas one will be next your next Christmas. build. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe you bought Christmas twenty twenty three. The other one in the box. Oh yeah. man, we need to get the stream so if someone get the camera down. So you. This Charity is what stream. I'm talking about. Send. These these moments send help. like cheers, Please send cheers help. to you guys, man. <laughs> cheers Thanks, to you. Phil. Someone get those mini figurines from him. They're a waste. Someone said help, please. Yes. I'm a broken uh -huh. man. Um, okay, so our favorite or best gaming moment, Eric or Casey, you're up next. Eric already went. Did you oh, no, sorry. Eric, you didn't go. Show no, me started. No. no, you go, Eric. Oh, you want me to go? You always want to go last. Well, that's, I'll go. I fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go. No, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> my game moment, and it's why Pokemon was number two for me. I got to play Pokemon with my son for like real, and we had a battle. We met up in Paldea, and we took our team that we'd beaten the gym leaders with. Same level. We made an agreement. I'm like, okay, you know, he picked the grass starter. I picked the water starter, and we stayed up late on a Saturday night. We told he's like, he asked my wife, my, his mom goes, can he? We have a sleepover, with Dad. And we made like a camp out. We stayed up and played Switch. His sister came down and actually ended up spending the night with us. But like we had litter pass out, stayed up and played and battled. I remember like the the duck has a like a move that makes him faster. He's like, hey, keep trying with your fancy footwork. Let's see what you do. He's talking trash for me. I was like, okay. And of course I beat him because I'm a mean dad. But it's just a <laughs> sweet tender moment that I was like, he's like, I'm gonna get you next time. I was like, you, I believe it. You know, and I'm totally gonna let him win um this next time it was super just uh it's years of a game that's like been a part of my life and it was a really fun moment to share with my son and enjoy that moment with him and that's irreplaceable me for this year that's my best game moment. it's an awesome moment that's great <laughs> thanks that's man. great and, and you know what's 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 really cool is my best gaming moment of the year actually involves you and your son oh no um, oh okay okay and yeah, uh, honorable mention completing the decks in Arceus, first Pokedex I've ever completed. <laughs> Happy to do that. But when I came, when I came, uh, when I came up for a visit this year, I it was it was the first time I've I've seen your son in the in the longest time, and you know your your kids are amazing, dude. I I, I love him, and I know they like they love him. And, and, he brings all the good yeah, Pokemon cards. They're like, yeah, he he does, and he still will. Um, but you know, you and me going, you know, we, we hit a couple different stores. We bought a couple of decks and at the end of it all, you know, on, on, you know, the last day I was there sitting there at the table with you and, and, and your son and me, and we each had our own Pokemon decks and we just outside of the bounds of any, any, any rules. We, we had a three-way Pokemon card in person, uh, in person like cordial, match. cordial match. No and, hanging up. And the rule we, is you can't finish we, the other person finished, the next time. Yeah. 
and we didn't even finish it. And but for me, so fun, but 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 you know, for for me being there with you guys and playing the TCG in person yeah. with my first deck, you know, with with some cool, you, you got the coolest old X and Y decks, man. Yeah, um, have some old fun. And there. but but just being able to enjoy that with you guys. Um, that's that's a moment I'm never gonna forget, and it easily make it's it's easily my my best gaming moment of of 2022. Those are all some really great moments, and I think great moments lead to great games. I think it's time to get in our top games. Um, let's hop into our favorite games of 2022. Eric, do you want to kick us off? Yeah. You want to let me kick this off? Oh, yeah, man. I can get the party started. Oh. I could not guess anybody's game of the year this year, which I'm really excited about too. Well, that's that's good. Uh, my my number one game of the year was Pokemon Arceus, and uh, I I love this game so much. It is the it, it's it, I I I equate this game to just to being taken on the most perfect first date with the most beautiful girl, most beautiful, <laughs> most that that it's just the most beautiful experience just just everything goes perfectly everything is right everything it's just it's and you just fall in love the entire time you're you're falling in love the entire time you're on this date and it's as as an overall pokemon experience it had so many elements that were just that had me going yes yes oh Get gathering, yes, mining, yes, uh, you know, uh, Pokemon outbreaks, yes, alpha or uh, alpha Pokemon, yes, flying around on a Pokemon, yes, climbing yeah. mountains with a Pokemon, yes, uh, you know, all the, you know, the the starters being just the, these these really interesting, uh, these these interesting Hisuian variations telling an amazing story, the origin story of um. Uh, of the Sinnoh region getting it was just so so much fun beginning to end i i can't say enough great things is it a flawless game no is it is it what i would I, I think calling it a concept game is probably maybe the best the, the best way to put it because it wasn't a fleshed out pokemon title it wasn't it didn't have the. It, it doesn't have the polish of of Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield is still the most polished Pokemon game out there. Uh, no, it's not that polished, but it's just it's so enjoyable. There's just there are so many things. That there's so many fun things to do, and it makes up. Pokemon has always been about promoting a multiplayer cooperative type of experience in some kind of a way. You know the the. Be, the, the idea behind having two versions of a game is so that you can meet up with somebody and you can trade, you can collaborate. Uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, the trading card game works perfectly within that concept. You have to play somebody. You have to, you have to know somebody. You got to talk to people. It, it, it promotes a community. What's different about Arceus is it's a single player experience. And what it lacks in that cooperative, it, it it really makes up for in the immersion. You really feel like these these different zones that you're exploring. You really feel like you're exploring the Pokemon universe. And for the first time in Pokemon, you're out there among wild Pokemon. And Scarlet and Violet don't have the catching mechanic that I thought was so amazing. You know, the the you can you you crouch in Scarlet and Violet. Why? I never used it. I need to crouch in in Pokemon Arceus. I need to get in the tall grass. I need to strategize. You know, here's this alpha Pokemon that I really want to... The, the alpha Infernape gave me so many problems trying to catch that guy. Uh, but yeah, just so, mu so much fun. Like all Pokemon games, the 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 post end game type, is, is it's, it's always really good. There's always lots of fun things to do. You get to learn more about the universe after you've kind of sort of beaten the the first part of the story. Um, I, I just enjoyed it from beginning to end. And nice. I, it, it, it is my game of the year and I no apologies for it. 
Cheers. No apologies needed. Cheers no. to Pokemon Arceus. No, and, and like yes. like really props to the Pokemon, like like Pokemon in general. Like for them to come out with Arceus and um, Scarlet Violet in the same year and to yeah. see it met with so much fanfare is pretty impressive. Like, you know, I personally think about Pokemon. I'm like, oh, yeah, I played that back in the day. And for them to be pushing in two kind of similar directions with new releases is pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving on to our next game of the year, uh, Philip, why don't you take the microphone and let us know what your game of the year is? Uh, <laughs> it has to be, so right? Shelby, Shelby, what's my game of the year? Your game what of the year it? is Fortnite. Fortnite, yeah, for sure. My game of the year, my game of the year is 100% Fortnite. Not because <laughs> of a narrative, not because of, of the narrative, not because of the gameplay. Fortnite is this generation's Mario. They every single time you think that that game is gonna die and they're done, even with the stigma of being a kid's game, even they they have every single cultural icon in the game. They just recently got who was it, Mr. Beast? Uh, oh, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast was well, in the, the game. Uh, Let Deku me stop you right there. Hero, What's uh, my game of the year, Philip? Your game of the year is also going to my be game Fortnite. of the year. Is Fortnite. You, man. My game of the year is Fortnite. Yes. Bunch of zoomers. I mean, so we can we we we, we can share yes. the limelight on this one. The, that is exactly right, and that's why I restacked this list to like for for me to go ne- to me to go next to you because this game is like it just like you said like i would wrote around the zoomers game you know what i mean like this game is for kids like this game isn't that advanced and as you peel peel back the layers of the onion on fortnite it is better and better with each experience and i am just blown away every time i'm just like yeah i could play this really cool first person experience but fortnite i mean we, we could just play a quick 20 minute match i mean it it is it is really good it is really it is the best it's ever been and i and i can't really speak to that personally because i haven't played it back in the day but this game is top shelf yeah i mean i mean i agree i mean i think that they were about to be dead in the water and they've had this several times where the the interest in the game how how old is this game it's like a 10 year old game isn't it like it came back it it must be at least 10 years old um Something like that. This game was about to be dead in the water. 2017. And then what was it? 17. 2017? Yeah. No way. It's really only five years no. old. Well, it was there was a release. beta. No so oddly enough, uh, Spool and I had a buddy, and I had the I was in the alpha for Fortnite. And when I played it, it was a completely different game. There was like a <laughs> build zombie horde game. And then PUBG came in and they're like, hey, I All think right. we could do that better than them. And I, I quit after the initial alpha and it became something completely different. So yeah. I have a question you are, for yeah, you guys. You mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> so what what's always intimidating to someone like me who's looking at a game like Fortnite with an established community? Mm-hmm. It's it's you know, like like I, I tried getting into Street Fighter a while back, and it's just so hard because the community is so hardcore. Yep. And that the learning curve is just is so steep. Yep. What for for somebody coming into Fortnite as a first time player, just you know, you you open up the game for the first time, go into your first match. How much fun are you going to have? How good is the community? So and how so here here's the brilliance. Acclimated. Yeah, here's the brilliance of Fortnite is they have a system where you are going to go in and play your first game of Fortnite and they are going to throw low level bots at you and you're going to take out a few of them and you're going to be like, damn, okay, yeah, I okay, I like this gun, this SMG is good, yeah, okay, I can roll with that. And then you're going to get some damage on your next couple of enemies and then you might get taken out by a real player. But what they've done is they've stacked those early experiences with enough low level bots that you are really like making traction and inroads on each encounter. I think furthermore, what really drew me to Fortnite and really got me, it, it took some me this year is the discoverability of this game. And by that, I mean, that's probably not the right word, but you drop in the exploration aspects that they work into Fortnite is like a genius. I'm the kind of guy that's a task-based gamer. I want to go in and do X, Y, and Z and make progress towards whatever. And you drop into a map that's completely like um, fogged out, right? It's all fogged out. And as you land in a zone, you go to a tower, it's like, oh, now I see this area of the map. I wonder what's over here. 
And the map design is so brilliant in that each one of those little pockets has something unique that almost feels like it's lived in and that there's a story underneath the surface. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with 100%. So first off, I'm not, I'm only talking about the zero build mode for me. Like I am not, Agreed. I am yeah. not going to be playing the actual building because first off, that's insane. And actually it was one of the reasons that turned me off to Fortnite in the very beginning when I first started playing it was you, you don't need to, to win the game. You don't need to actually do any building, even in the build mode. So that's how they sort of survived is this, I think it was this year, wasn't it? Where they released mm -hmm. zero build mode. And that brought everyone back, right? And what really brought me back was the Dr. Z giving us those cards. And then I was like, oh, let me just give this a second shot, right? When you're looking at a BR style game, whether it's Apex or PUBG or Fortnite or whatever it is, there's two things that you are um, that you're really concerned about, right? You're concerned about the pacing of the game. How fast does it feel like you're going, right? Pub, games like PUBG, right? really slow really slow paced games you may not see anybody for a half an hour and then somebody snipes you in the head and you die you don't even know where they shot you from games like fortnite some game like fortnite has the perfect time to kill so i can drop in on fortnite and you guys have seen me right nine kills 10 kills 11 kills 12 kills and i feel like i'm able to get things done they've added so much detail to the map like uh shall be saying where you can pick up a fishing rod you can go fishing and you can you can get fish that will heal you you can go to different areas and they have different secret things and you can hire people and there are bounties and there are things that are going on throughout the game which add to what makes brs great and what makes brs great in general is the it's it feels like a, every match feels completely different and that has to do with the randomness of the circles the randomness of the loot every single time you drop in your the circles are going in different directions directions you're picking up different guns and i will say that fortnite fortnite is a game that only excels when played with friends um some of the funnest moments that i've had in streaming have been playing with shelby playing with nathaniel or hg right playing with them and like having these adult moments where we're not taking it too seriously you play you play games like you're saying eric with established communities like dota you're playing like league of legends mm -hmm. you jump in right and there's a ton of pressure to perform well because you can get into a 45 minute match and like, if you don't know what you're doing and in the beginning, you don't know what you're doing, you can waste 45 minutes. Like we're going to lose and there's nothing we can do, but mm -hmm. um, play this 45 minute match and lose. Whereas with Fortnite, the, the risk reward is pretty low, right? Yeah. You can just die and you go, oh, let's just queue up another one. You know? So for me, and it just, it continues to survive and thrive. Agreed. And in terms of like BRs from my experience personally, is I really liked Apex Legends coming out of the gate. Like I, it was one of my favorite games that year, but I bounced off of it within two weeks because I found myself like not making the traction or feeling like I was accomplishing anything in every match. And the thing that I think Fortnite does so well is it couples like these quests that we're just like, go to this area and look at this thing. And then boom, experience. And here's the next quest. But it's also layered with a battle royale so you jump in you do your little quest thing in my play experience and i'm like okay well there's 20 people left on the map let's see what we can do you know and maybe you win maybe you don't but then you boot out and boot back in and go right back to that quest so i think that that integration for me has really kept it like in the zeitgeist and that paired with the fact that they're constantly updating those quests every week and then like this week they have a Mr. Beast event and Winterfest is happening. So every day you log in, you get a prize. Guys, I'm trying to figure out how I can take this game to Hawaii and play on my account. Like you can play on your phone. <laughs> well, and you guys are giving me trash about mobile question. games. No, yeah. no, no. I, Just play it on your phone. It's a mobile game. Fortnite's a mobile game. Time out. It's a mobile game. You like I, oh mobile my games. god, Fortnite yeah, is oh game's a mobile game. You gotta get a check. It is. No. It's on the phone. It makes it a mobile game. I, I think one of the reasons this game becomes it's the really game bad. of my year is that I started playing it six to nine months ago when solos came or solo no builds come yeah, out no builds. right i'm not intimidated by it i'm gonna get in i had a good run with it we played for like a couple of months uh dr z and i like we were enjoying it and then okay well i'm gonna go do this over here and now i keep getting people being like hey you want to hop on and play fortnite hey they just did an update oh there, there's mr beast is in the game you want to check out what's going on there like they're they are pulling me back into this ecosystem over and over again and here's the beauty of the what, what the system they've set up is they have not asked me for a dime 
The yeah. only reason I put money towards this game is to buy a stupid skin where I can be like, hey guys, look at my stupid skin. Look at my dance. Isn't this cool? <laughs> and that element, them not coming up and being like, give me a monthly, give me 60 bucks is like, bro, I'll go anywhere for you. Like I will throw <laughs> a battle pass at you. Like let me throw my money at the screen because my price per fun is like exponential. And, and I just can't get enough. Yeah, and, and this is exactly right, right? I think that, that you hammered this one exactly correct, which is that they don't pressure you to buy the Battle Pass. And not only that, you can unlock elements of the Battle Pass for free just by playing the game. So you still feel like maybe every fourth tier, you if you have enough stars that you unlock by actually playing the game, you can get some of the Battle Pass for free. They are over-delivering on free stuff. And like to Shelby's point with this uh, Christmas gift, Every day that you log on to Fortnite, you get a free skin. You get a free something. It's a free gift. It's completely, here you go. Here's a free customization. You get a free glider. You get a free skin. You get a free gun skin. You get a free background. Everything is customizable, right? And they just keep loading you with free things. That with all of their events. Look, man, we're, we're older gamers, right? I'm, I'm too tired. I'm not logging in at 8 p.m. to watch a concert on Fortnite. I'm not. I mean, I'm just not doing it. I'm going to play it when I feel like playing it. But the fact that they exist, those events do exist. Plenty of people are logging in and watching those. And it's creating sort of a cultural hub where people are collecting to come hang out and just be like, hey, do you want to get a couple rounds into Shelby's point, right? Played with HG. We got those cards brought Shelby and hey do you want to just like a couple rounds and then it's two in the morning and like we've won three games in a row and then if you ever want to see grown men giggle <laughs> just like watch us win back to back yeah. games in Fortnite sure. like it's uh yeah. it's another level for sure so Highly so, so there's two more things I want to hit and I know we got to wrap this up and, and I know we're gushing a little bit but there's two more things that I want to hit before we leave this about one, a mobile this... game just gonna say it one more time go ahead what was that <laughs> i said about a mobile game but go ahead. i mean it's 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 definitely way better than a mobile game but i it's, mean is it on a phone you know, is I mean, it on a phone Time i mean, out. Time out. Poke, Can I mean you, you can't phone? compare Can you pokemon you go to Can fortnite you i'm sorry you can't Can you like, this is yes or no you're you're avoiding the question sir yes what or no. i you played on your phone yes what or no. i, I say, hey i'm only i like to do this the rest of the show yes or no is it on a phone i mean you can play i've never played it on phone i wouldn't know could you could you? I mean, I, I I've been told that. Okay. I heard a rumor. I, I heard a rumor, but I don't know if it's, okay. know well, if it's real or not. What I want to say is that a couple things. I want to give roses to the Epic team because I am somebody that has written off Fortnite for years and years. And if you would have told me a year ago that Fortnite was even going to come close to my top five games of the year, I would have said, you're smoking dope. You're crazy. Like you're off this planet. You're not even in my realm. But what I, what they have done this year with the integration of zero build with the integration of Dragon Ball Z is they are going after my, my demographic and I'm completely okay with it. And once I got into it, I'm like, okay, I really appreciate this game. And then what do they do? They take the entire map that I have got comfortable with and they have completely gutted it. You can't even go back and play that old map and put a brand new map on top of it with new things to discover, new towers to figure out what the best placement is, new weapons. They've taken a lot of those old weapons and they're gone. Like my old rifle is not even like, I can't even get it anymore. Right. So what they're doing is they are taking their platform and they are evolving it, whether you like it or not. And it is beautiful because they are doing something that no other game does, in, in my opinion, is that they are gunning it and redesigning it over and over again. You look at that graphical upgrade that they dropped just this last month, and it is significant. Watch a one to one comparison between the two. And it is very, very impressive. Furthermore, and the last thing I want to say about the map and their updates is I was listening to somebody talk about this game just recently. And essentially what they said is like, you know, people always want the old Fortnite map. People say, hey, I want to play the original Fortnite map. And the, the streamer basically responds and says, if you were to take a zero build dynamic and drop it on the original Fortnite map, it would be a miserable experience. And what I mean by that is they have handcrafted this map to work into a zero build experience and it works flawlessly. 
Each game is different. The tactics and the strategy that you work into every run is significant and you have to give some forethought to. And I just can't say enough about how good this game is right now. And I am the last person that I thought would ever put a multiplayer game at the top of my list. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to that. Yeah, I think Fortnite, Fortnite. is good for reason. I'm going to get off my I'm going to get off my soapbox now, guys. Okay. <laughs> and that is your mobile game of the year, everybody. Now oh that he's off the soapbox. Gosh. Uh, Casey's game of the year, Marvel Snap. <laughs> no. Hey man, Marvel Snap is making money. No, my game of the year, I don't think you can even guess it cuz I don't know if you were around when I talked about it, Shelby. Do you two have any guesses? Anybody have any guesses what my game of the year is? Well, it's I not Pokemon no Arceus. Not Pokemon Arceus. Not Arceus. Um, it's this tight little package. It's a remake what? of a 1995 game. Oh, and... I don't know. Live, uh, live is my game of the year. Yeah. Um, that game made me feel some feels when I played it. It's a tight package. You, you, it's. It's this game that was a failure at launch on the Super Nintendo, but like an indie crowd found it and beloved it. And then Octopath, you know, coming back with this 2D, 2.5 HD pixel art style. I'm a sucker for that. I love that because it brings the Super Nintendo era is my one of my all time favorite gaming eras. Some great JRPGs. And they take that and evolve it and make it look like a pop up box. But this 2D to 5 uh, or 2.5 HD team that has taken over or they got hired uh, for this is phenomenal so they nail these graphics and the the creator uh takashi uh, tokita he always talks about like he he wanted to make a game that was seven separate stories and kind of like how octopath has the seven people and it doesn't intertwine but this is different everyone that like didn't like octopath said go play this game and you can only play it in a patch rom and then they go hey we're gonna make this game out of nowhere for 40 bucks which is a good deal right for 40 hours of gameplay but you you finish a story it's not like a jared but you were like i had to put 100 hours in 35 tops and you're happy because it's it's seven vignettes you're a cowboy your cowboy fights on this tile grid battler but his story is you have to go get the whole community to help you to stop the banditos from coming in and shooting you you're a caveman trying to save the only other cave lady with your monkey sidekick there's tons of anime jokes and fart. The monkey's best move is he farts on everybody. He farts on a dinosaur. You're like, okay, what's going on? It's just super like coy like that. Um, they it you can play a little bit and feel like you've done something. And each story is intriguing and kind of there's this overarching theme with the bad guy. And like one of the games, this is the one that I started with, and this is what hooked me. There was no battling till the very end. It was a sci-fi thriller where you're a robot and you have to figure out what is killing everybody on the ship. Right. And you have to do like it's a it's a story based game where you have to go and investigate. And then at parts you have to run away. Like I, I, I love the Alien movies. I think Aliens is a great film. And it puts that in a Super Nintendo game when you think about that. And then they put it there and they nail it. That tension. Right. Uh, the music, the themes. Great. And anybody that wants to like play a JRPG and just see what they can be and wants to like, OK, I don't want to play 60 hours, 20 hours a lot for me. You could probably play this game and get a lot out of it for 20 but for $40, a 35-hour game that nails different. And every game has its own unique mechanic, right? I don't want to go through all of them. I, I can sum up Kung Fu Fighter, MMA Master from the 90s, because it takes place in different times. There's a kid from the future that has psychic abilities, and that ends up being a giant kaiju battle. Kaijus are like Godzilla and the robot. Like, it goes so many different places and nails each story. If I were someone asked me, like, okay, what was your favorite, like, episode to go play? I, I don't have a favorite or worst. You can play it in any order too. There's no like secret. I'm like, like what order did I have to play? I didn't have to do that. I can enjoy like, I want to see the cowboy story. I want to see the ninja. The ninja is a stealth mission. The ninja, it, ha it has to be the first true stealth game. Cause I watched the super Nintendo play. You can put up a mask. You can do a no kill run or a genocide run and kill everybody in that. Those the Jap Japanese temple. It's an amazing game and more people need to play it. You'll have fun. You'll find one story like, oh, that story was awesome. And I did it in an hour, right? Like for Phil, like he'd be the ninja. Like I'm going to kill every person in this building and just kick down the door. And it's great. That's a fun way to play. <clears throat> and I would love to watch it. So in terms of not, game recommendations game. from you, okay. in terms of game recommendations, Casey, the very the best game, game recommend, the very best game recommendation you have ever given me, guess what it is? 
Sleeping One Dogs, hands down. Exactly. And it's a, a fantastic put, game. Where do you put this in terms of uh, in terms like, of like, like all time great? Because like it feels like it feels like this is a game that flies under the radar, like Sleeping Dogs. Yes, Sleeping Dogs flies under the radar, and Sleeping Dogs was amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Sleeping so, Dogs is one so of the greatest games ever. Where does this game? Where does this game like? I would replay it. That's the thing about JRPGs. Some JRPGs I can be like, I'm done. I'm, I did everything. I, I think about that. I'm like, it'd be really fun to go do the Cowboys level again and try to get all the bandits, like figure out the item order. Or I want to go kill all those ninjas and samurais in that building. And that'd take me about an hour, right? There's little things like that. And the battling's fun. There's no MP. You start with full health every battle. So you just have to use the moves and yeah. mechanics. And like, it, there's this thing, a mechanic where this beats this. So, hey, this guy's weak to this move. Use this. And it hits in a straight line and hits all of them. Like the the shapes of the attacks, if you think Final Fantasy Tactics, like certain moves made a T. Like there's long Xs, there's Vs, there's zigzags, there's like big block squares. Like you're like, oh, okay. And it makes sense because like, oh, this character uses psychic powers. The caveman goes and smacks things with his his bone. Like he's my favorite character, by the way. So, so coming to so a JRPG caveman, of July near you. Good. Live live. My last thing about the caveman. They tell a beautiful story with no dialogue. It's just grunts and the characters interacting and like what's That's perfect symbols. for you, Casey. Your knuckles are always fuck. Yes. Your knuckles yes. Are always, <laughs> he speaks to me. Always, always hairy. They're, they're always scraping on the ground. Oh my gosh! But live, live. Uh, I recommend a big try. It, Too it, funny. Over Octopath, I, I think Octopath's a harder thing to sell. I think this is people would walk away and be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, this is good." That's exciting. Yeah, I'll I'll have to check that out. I know that that is. I normally try to play the game that you put on the top of your list as long as it's not a huge overarching RPG, which mm -hmm. has scared me year over year. But this yeah. one seems seems penetrable for me. It is. <laughs> I think you and Eric do it. I think I would love to see it. Love to so see. So cheers it. to live alive. Cheers to live alive. Cheers to live alive. Right. Game sure. of the year. Um, so I guess, so our games of 2022, we started, uh, Casey's list starts with Marvel Stamp and that number five, Triangle Strategy, number four, Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, number three, Pokemon Scarlet, number two, and Live Alive is number one. Um, we get to Eric, Triangle Strategy comes in the fifth spot, followed by Pokemon Scarlet, and then Pokemon Sword, number two is a Far Cry 5, and number one, Pokemon Arceus? Arceus? Yes. Arceus. Okay. And then Philip also okay. with number five spot, Lego Star Wars Saga coming in the fourth spot, Chrono Trigger, followed by Slay the Spire, Half Life 2, and number one spot is Fortnite. Um, I, my last, my fifth game would be The Forgotten City, followed by Soma, then Depth. Death Loop at number three, Inscription at number two, and Fortnite takes my number one spot. And those are our favorite games of 2022. Tell us what you think in the comments. That's right. Come check us out. Tell We're doing things, guys. 2023 is about to be a year. Yes, sir. And we hope that you join us for the ride because it's going to be quite the ride. Um, we appreciate you all out there watching and listening and following our contact. We have a podcast. We have channels galore. And we wouldn't be able to do them without you. So thank you very much for being with us. That oh. is a wrap for this week. We are out. Play Go ahead, Phil. Play again. Play again.